This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to Pilgrim Congregational Church. How is everybody? Good, wonderful. My name is Amy Stewart Jagir, and I am the minister here. And I'm so excited to welcome you to be with us this morning. We're so glad that you've chosen to be here and worship with us this morning. We are an open and affirming congregation of the United Church of Christ. So no matter who you are or wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. And I'd like to just say, I know we have some guests today, so I'd like to ex extend an especially warm welcome to you, and we hope that you'll come back and worship with us often. I do know that we actually have international guests here today, so we'd like to say thank you for coming across the pond to be with us. <laughs> uh, I just have a few things I'd like to share about worship this morning. In your pews, you'll find this welcome card, and so if you'd like to communicate something to me, especially if you would like me to contact you in some way, then please fill out that card and drop it in the offering plate on the way by. There are also prayer request cards in the pews. If you have a joy or a concern you'd like us to lift up during our prayers for the people later in the worship service, you can fill that out and drop it in the offering plate as well. Following worship, everyone is invited down to Mamblo Hall out this door and to the right for a time of fellowship and refreshments. So please join us for that. It's just a wonderful time to build community together. Today we'll conclude our collection for the Brewster Animal Rescue League of Boston. We are collecting things for them because they're a pet shelter and adoption center and many they rely on donations. So we're doing that in honor of the blessing of the animals which will happen this afternoon at one o'clock out on our front lawn. So if you have an animal you'd like to bring and have blessed then please do that. And uh, stuffies are welcome too. So if you don't have a live pet, you can bring a stuffed pet with you. <laughs> Just, to, I want to keep this in front of your mind, that on October 22nd, there will be only one worship service at 3 o'clock that day, and it will include the installation of yours truly as, to my best count, your 39th settled pastor. So I'm so excited to share in the celebration with all of you that afternoon, but please come at 3 instead of 10. Okay, so please note that the office will be closed this Friday and next Monday. So just if you need business to do business here at the office, do it Monday through Thursday or Tuesday through Friday next week. So does anyone have a birthday during the month of October? Raise your hand if you do. Yay! Let's sing. I'd like to share two other quick things with you. We, there's a misprint in your bulletin. Our final hymn is indeed number 330, but that is the wrong title that's listed in your bulletin. It's Let Us Break Bread Together. So just don't get nervous when you get to 330 and think you have the wrong hymn. It is the right hymn. <laughs> and then for our benediction today, we're going to do something a little bit different. We will move to the outside of the sanctuary kind of making a big giant circle together and we want that to represent unity as it is world communion sunday we will however refrain from holding hands just because we know that covid is ticking up once again unfortunately so please note that uh, if you're if you're not able to stand that's okay to scooch to the end and we'll include you in the circle and finally um, when the Benediction concludes, when we finish singing, we're going to sing together, Let There Be Peace on Earth. And so at the end of that, you don't have to sit back down for the, benedic for the postlude. I think Matt's okay with that. Right, Matt? Okay, good. 
I, did, I didn't put him on the spot. I did ask him before, just so you know. So finally, I'd like to invite us to make sure that we're aware of and welcoming all those that are joining us via live stream. And we can pass the peace to one another and greet those joining us on live stream by turning around and facing that camera under the clock. Give a wave to let them know we know they're there and we appreciate that they're there. And then please greet one another. Please rise if you are able and join with me in the call to worship. I am the one and you are the all. Around the world, people gather to share in bread and cup. We gather with them in heart and mind. Around the world, the broken body is made whole. As part of that body, we june in its unity Around the world, this spiritual feast of God is prepared for the table. Let us share in the feast and worship together. Let us celebrate the love of God, the peace of Christ, and the communion of the Holy Spirit. Now please join me on page 395 in your hymnal, for in Christ there is no east or west. be seated. Now please join me in the opening prayer printed in your bulletin. Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light. Where there is sadness, 
joy. O Divine Master, grant that I may not so much seek to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love, for it is in giving that we receive, it is in pardoning that we are pardoned, and it is in dying that we are born to eternal life. Amen. Please join me in the prayer for transformation and new life. Holy God, Mother of Mercy, Father of Grace, you have called us to one table, but we have pursued our own course. You have promised us the abundance of all creation, but in our greed and in our envy, the world goes without. You have promised us the bread of life itself, but in our pride and in our arrogance, the world goes hungry. You have promised us the waters of peace and justice, but in our violence and in our discord, the world goes thirsty. And now we are famished too, Lord. Have mercy on us, forgive us again, Transform us at this table and for this table and send us from this table as servants of your righteousness. Now the assurance of God's grace, even when our cups run dry, God's grace overflows. Even when our plates are empty, God's generosity overflows. And even when our hearts feel barren, God's love overflows. <clears throat> Friends, we have been called and claimed by God of all things and by all abundance of God's grace. By the power of God's love, we have been forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen.
Today's first scripture lesson is from the Old Testament, and if you'd like to follow along, it's on page 58 in your pew Bibles. It's Exodus chapter 12, verses 14 to 17. This day shall be a remembrance of you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. Seven days you shall eat unleavened bread. On the first day you shall remove leaven from your houses, for whoever eats leavened bread from the first day until the seventh day shall be cut off from Israel. On the first day you shall hold a solemn assembly, and on the seventh day a solemn assembly. No work shall be done on those days. Only what everyone must eat, that alone, may be prepared by you. You shall observe the festival unleavened bread, for on this day I brought your companies out of the land of Egypt. You shall observe this day throughout your generations as a perpetual ordinance. The second reading is from the New Testament, on page 30. It's Matthew chapter 26, verses 17 to 19 and 26 to 29. On the first day of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus saying, where do you want us to make the preparations for you to eat the Passover? He said, go into the city to a certain man and say to him, the teacher says, My time is near. I will keep the Passover at your house with my disciples. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them, and they prepared the Passover meal. While they were eating, Jesus took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to the disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body. Then he took the cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you, for this is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will never again drink of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. This is the word of the Lord. Please pray with me. O gracious God, may the words of my lips and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, for you are our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So I'm wondering, what is your preferred learning style? Do you know? Maybe you've never thought about it before. Really, the question is, how do you learn best? Is it easiest for you to learn by seeing, visual learning, or by hearing, auditory learning? Or perhaps you learn best by doing, kinesthetic or tactile learning? Or even newer ways that have been identified are reading and writing, verbal, linguistic, social, or interpersonal. The truth is, many of us learn best through multi-sensory learning, which is a combination of all of those styles. (laughs) So as you may know, for many years, I was a health and physical education teacher. And as such, I studied and taught kinesthetic learning. That is the ability of someone learning through carrying out physical activities or the mode of learning that's also been called tactile, when one learns by manipulating or touching things or moving their body. The idea here is the more one practices or repeats fine motor or whole body movements and or manipulation of items like learning to play an instrument, the more a person learns through their sense of touch and movement. So with this background, it got me thinking about our practice of celebrating communion in the way that we do. It's also, as you probably know, 
known as the Lord's Supper or the Eucharist or even the Agape Feast, to name a few. So here on World Communion Sunday, we join Christians all around the globe in this celebration. And it's based in part on the two readings that Derry just shared with us. So in the time of Exodus, God instructed Moses and Aaron to be sure the Israelites remembered the Passover event by celebrating the festival of unleavened bread. So this morning, we read the words from Exodus 12, followed by the words from Matthew 26. And we understand that Jesus and his disciples were in the midst of this festival of unleavened bread and preparing to celebrate the Passover meal. So at the beginning of Passover each year, as they have for generations, Jewish families gather to remember their ancestors' liberation from Egyptian bondage. Their remembrance is not simply recall, it is reenactment. They don't just sit around and tell the story, they relive it. It's a multi-sensory experience, and I'm wondering, has anyone ever attended a Passover Seder. Ah, so you know of what I speak. They sit down to this Passover meal, this Seder. So in Exodus 12, when the command for the Passover meal is given, we read, this day shall be a remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord throughout your generations. You shall observe it as a perpetual ordinance. So like the Passover Seder is to the Jewish community of faith, a remembrance of liberation, the Eucharist is for the Christian community, remembrance of the Last Supper, which represents also liberation from bondage, but in our case, sin and death. We participate as often as we do it in the meal with Jesus and with one another. And we don't just tell the story either. We live the story. For me, this is why participation is so important in the actions that we take, in taking the bread, giving thanks for it, blessing it, breaking it, and finally giving it, sharing it with one another, just as Jesus did in the meals that he shared that we read about in the Bible. Furthermore, through this anamnesis, Have you ever heard that word before? It's just a fancy theological word for remembering, anamnesis. We are bringing together the past, the present, and the future through this ritual in which we participate. Both Jews and Christians join their kin in these kinds of remembrances that take us through time and place and recreate the events that are central to our identity. Author James White describes this really well, so I'm going to quote him here. Based on Passover and Jesus' words and significant acts at the Last Supper, when we participate in communion, words and significant acts help us to make present, to make present the saving power of God's acts, culminating in the great event of liberation, and look forward to God's future works of deliverance. He goes on to say, Throughout time, God is blessed for past events, once again made present in their ability to save. And God is implored to confer future benefits. Did you know all that was happening when you take communion? (laughs) One of the beautiful gifts of communion is bringing together these things, these, this past, this present, and these future events. In other words, to me, all history meets at the table. We remember the past experience of, of those who came before us in the faith. We are participating in the present, what we hope for in the future. So in those ways, all time meets at this table. And it is a powerful experience of transcendence. There's this document that I learned about when I was in seminary. It's, it's really quite dry. <laughs> it's called Baptism, Eucharist, and Ministry 
But I like the way it describes this, this uh, thought about pulling things together. And it goes like this. The very celebration of the Eucharist is an instance of God's, and ch- uh, excuse me, it's the instance of church's participation in God's mission in the world. So this part- participation takes everyday form in the proclamation of the gospel, of service to the neighbor, and faithful presence in the world. I really like that. It kind of illustrates this past, present, and future idea. So there is something unifying about us gathering together to share a meal. The act of doing so strengthens our relationships and builds community. This type of community includes the local church, like us, but also the wider church and extends to the whole world. So World Communion Sunday, I think, emphasizes this quite well, as communion embraces all aspects of life. It's a representative act of thanksgiving and offering on behalf of the world. The celebration of communion demands reconciliation and sharing among all those regarded as brothers and sisters, siblings in faith, in one family of God. And it is a constant challenge for us in search for appropriate relationships in social, economic, and political life We could really use some of that right now, couldn't we? These are things that are evidenced throughout our New Testament scriptures. So in other words, gathering for this meal of communion and remembering the liberation made possible through Jesus' saving acts, God is calling us to extend that same liberation to others. So in our denomination's book of worship, our denomination being the United Church of Christ, emphasizes a movement from meal to mission, from meal to mission. In other words, our participation in communion is practice for what we are compelled to do, to take action beyond the walls of this building The United Church of Christ has an enduring stance, as you probably know, for social justice issues, supporting action and mission in the world. And our church, Pilgrim Congregational Church, is no exception to that. Every Communion Sunday, the Missions Committee collects food to be shared with social service agencies in our area, helping those in need. Week in and week out, Izzy's team works diligently to collect and sort and label clothing items to be shared again with area social agents, agencies that, and for people in particular who are experiencing housing insecurity. Traditionally, members of Pilgrim have given financial support to a variety of initiatives through our church's wider mission. And for seven years now, the drop-in after-school center has provided families and children of this community with much-needed after-school care. So these are just a few examples of what we are already doing. And we are about to begin a visioning process. This is really an exciting opportunity for us to think about additional or perhaps new and different ways of extending the mission of God into the world. So the ways in which this church can move from communion meal, the communion meal, to mission is limited only by our imaginations. So what can we imagine about how Pilgrim Congregational Church may help provide liberation to others. What are we doing right now that is having an impact on the world around us? Who do you know that is most in need of God's loving kindness? And how might our fearless faith guide us toward understanding God's call to action Now, how might we be the hands and feet of Jesus in Harwich and beyond? 
So through our ritual and repetition each month during communion, we are remembering the Last Supper of our Lord and Savior. And in so doing, we are not merely thinking about it. We are actually physically doing something. And by doing, we are not only reflecting on the past event, we are representing, representing the past so that we can experience it again. And by experiencing it again, we are further moved to offer the bread of life and the cup of blessing to others, too, so they might also experience the liberation offered here. May it be so. Don't forget to pray today, because God didn't forget to wake you up. Here's a simple prayer I'd like to share with you. I tried to find credits online for it, and I found it referenced several times in the St. Mark's Church, Greece, which I thought was in Greece, but it's actually in Rochester, New York. So here's the simple prayer I'd like to share with you that a member of our congregation shared with a few of us. When you wake up, say, Jesus, I love you. When leaving the house, say, Jesus, come with me. When you feel like crying, say, Jesus, hug me. When you feel happy, say, Jesus, I adore you. When you do something, say, Jesus, help me. When you make a mistake, say, Jesus, forgive me. When you go to sleep, say, thank you, Jesus, and cover me with your whole mantle. God loves you. The morning offering will now be received.
Let us be in a spirit of prayer together as we dedicate these offerings received. Faithful God, we gratefully acknowledge that you are the giver of all things. You call us to share our gifts so that we may experience the joy and humility of giving to others. We pray that this very act of offering our gifts to you will enable us to be obedient disciples of your work in the world. We are blessed to receive and to offer the message of salvation. Jesus Christ is Lord. Praise your holy name. Amen. You may be seated. So as we come to this beautifully prepared table, I have a few things I'd like to share with you. So first, I want to let you know that in a moment when we do the invitation, there are some responsive parts, and I want to let you know what those are. So there will be a part where we, where am I? Hmm, Here we go. Side one and side two. So it's one and then side one and side two. So if you're on side one, raise your hand. Yes. If you're on side two, raise your hand. Oh, yes. You are such quick learners. See, it's a multi-sensory experience, right? (laughs) Okay. So that's one thing. Also, the Lord's Prayer, when we get to the point of saying the Lord's Prayer, please note that the Lord's Prayer today, we are taking from the, uh, I think it's New Zealand prayer book. It's an insert, which I left up here. Hang on. I don't have this one memorized. <laughs> okay, so this is the Lord's Prayer from the New Zealand Prayer Book. So that will be our prayer. And then finally, I want to give a few instructions. We will participate in communion by intinction. So that means all who are able will come forward by the center aisle. You'll take uh, bread, which is actually on a little... Um, uh, what is it called? Cute. What is it? Toothpick. I was trying to say cute. Okay. No. No. Toothpick. So that will allow you to then uh, put your bread in the cup and then partake. And Ted, did you remember to put? Uh oh. Well, there were supposed to be garbage cans over here so that you could put your toothpick in the garbage. So we'll just maybe we could figure out something else. We'll figure something out. Uh, so that then you can go back and be seated by the outside aisle, okay? So I just want you to know that that's how it will work. However, if you're unable, see, look at all these wonderful people (laughs) taking care of the problem. Okay, so then, so the other thing I want to share with you as far as this process of uh, receiving communion, um, our bread is gluten-free, so everyone is able to participate, and the cup is grape juice, so everyone is able to participate, I think. If you're unable to come forward, then just raise your hand, and Bethany, our lovely deacon, will come and bring communion to you. So you don't have to try to struggle to come up if if that's something that would be difficult for you to do. So I just want you to understand that that's our process. Um, So let's begin. So World Communion Sunday began at Shadyside Presbyterian Church in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania in 1933. That church and their pastor sought to demonstrate the interconnectedness of Christian churches regardless of denomination. It's so easy for us to focus on the things that divide us rather than the things that unite us. And so the idea was to unite us. So our church today joins Christian churches across the globe on this first Sunday of October each year to celebrate unity among churches. 
So the United Church of Christ believes in an open table where everyone is welcome. Everyone is welcome. So let us join responsively. Side one, side two. Okay. As many Christians near and far, we gather around the table, being sourdough, rye, tortillas, crackers, wafers, and Wonder Bread, the body of Christ, drinking the wine or the juice from hands, chalices, and silver goblets, golden spoons, and little mini cups, the blood of Christ. The bread and the cup unite us with all who would follow Jesus. This real to the truth. This table reaches around the world. Let us drink with, with joy. So let us be in a spirit of prayer. From every place on this planet, we turn to face you, O oh God. Gather us, all your people, together to pray. In the midst of forces which would separate us, bind us in your love as the church together. Strengthen us through the grace of your people gathered, no matter how we gather, with the truth of your presence. In a world aching to be made new, we cry out with those who suffer the pain of what powers and principalities extract from the world's most vulnerable. We cry out with those suffering from illness and disease, at whom the world turns a callous glance. We cry out with those stinging from oppression. We cry out with those seeking justice, equality, and peace. At all times, in all ways, in a world stretching toward wholeness, we celebrate with those whose lives bear the fruit of your spirit and seek to share in your call to partnership. We celebrate with those whose efforts are making the world new. We celebrate with all who gather to earnestly seek your transforming work in the world. O oh God, make us a world that grows into the shape of your communion table, where all are welcomed and all are fed. Make us a people who grow your family by practices of mutuality, generosity, and justice. And may we be witnesses to the truth of those who were created to be the people who belong to each other, people who belong to God. We pause now and offer the prayers of our community to you, O oh God, for Kathy and Jeannie, for Rose Marie and Donald, for John, for Beth, Kathleen and Dee Dee, Kelly, for Brad, for Jimmy, and the Bryden family, for Joey in hospice care, for our niece Sydney with knee injury, for Elise in hospice, for Heidi's husband, for my Fred, friend Ed facing serious health issues, peace and love to Ross, Bonnie, and their family, in celebration of our nephew's wedding yesterday for Cam and Brianna, for continued recovery for Bruce, in loving memory of my dear mom, for David, now in Spalding rehab after heart surgery, for Russ, our son-in-law, in ICU at Brigham and Women's Hospital, recovering from a ruptured brain aneurysm one week ago. Mm. And for joy this day, and a happy birthday to Alexandra. And now, O oh God, in this time of silence, we lift the prayers of our hearts even those which perhaps are too fragile for the spoken word. We now 
now join our voices together in the Lord's Prayer from the New Zealand Prayer Book. Eternal Spirit, Earth Maker, Pain Bearer, Life Giver, Source of all that is and that shall be, Father and Mother of us all, Loving God, in whom is heaven, the hallowing of your name echoes through the universe. The way of your justice be followed by the peoples of the world. Your heavenly will be done by all created beings. Your commonwealth of peace and freedom sustain our hope and come on earth. With the bread we need for today, feed us. And the hurts we absorb from one another, forgive us. In times of temptation and testing, strengthen us. From trials too great to endure, spare us. From the grip of all that is evil, free us. For you reign in the glory of the power that is love, now and forever. Amen. On the night of death and of betrayal, Jesus took bread as he sat down with his disciples and he gave thanks for it and broke it saying, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And so we give thanks for this bread, for the fruit of the earth and hard work, a gift of the grace of God. We break it and share it, remembering the words and actions, gestures and glances, silences and self-offered life of the teacher from Nazareth, Jesus. And after supper, in the same way, Jesus took the cup and after giving thanks, he blessed it and he gave it to his disciples, saying, this is my blood poured out for you and for many for the remembrance and forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. And we give thanks for the fruit of the vine, for the joy of communion, for alliances that endure, and the search for justice and wholeness. We take this cup knowing that we are part of a community of people renewing its covenant with life. So now I invite us to eat together the bread of life and let us drink together the cup of blessing. And I invite the deacons to come forward to serve with me because we invite you to come now for all things have been made ready.
Let us pray. O oh God, we are one with you. You have made us. You dwell in us. Help us to preserve this openness and to fight for it with all our hearts. Help us to realize that there can be no understanding where there is mutual rejection. O oh God, in accepting one another wholeheartedly, fully, completely, we accept you, and we thank you, and we adore you, and we love you with our whole being, because our being is in your being. Our spirit is rooted in your spirit. Fill us then with love, and let us be bound together with love as we go in our diverse ways, united in this one spirit, which makes you present in the world and makes you witness to the ultimate reality that is love. Love has overcome. Love is victorious. Amen. So let's make a circle. <laughs> this is kinesthetic learning right here. <laughs> exactly. Getting close. <laughs> let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. Let there be peace on earth, a peace that was made.
guys are the best. That's awesome. <laughs> awesome.